off to the dentist. Are you nervous? I am nervous. You are. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's not just getting a little filling, it's sort of a bit of a major job, so yeah, I am a bit nervous. So this is Gary's tooth, he's broken. It's broken off flush at gum level, so there's nothing left above the gum to work with, so there's no simple prospects to repair that tooth. This is the tooth in question here. It's had a nerve taken out before, which is root canal treatment, um, but over time the tooth's worn away and it's broken off at gum level, so there's nothing we can do to that tooth to, to rebuild it. Did you brush your teeth? Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Did he give you anything to prepare for this procedure? The only thing, um, they gave me antibiotics, so I've had to take four antibiotics this morning, and then from now on you go through the whole lot of them. Um, one three times a day. So the only option is to extract it and replace um, either with a denture or, or an implant. Um, Gary's chosen an implant to replace it. Let's face it, no one really likes a dentist, but today I have to go um, to the dentist. I am going to get an implant, but um, I broke a tooth off a few weeks ago and I've been and got it, had a look, um, the dentist has had a look at it. Um, the best way to fix that tooth is to remove the old um, tooth and then get a dental implant and then that'll be um, right forever then. So today's the first visit um, of three visits. I have to go and get this tooth removed today. They pack it and then leave it for a few months until the bone grows and then I'll go back and actually get the implant. Gold Coast Dental Solutions. Gold Coast Dental Solutions, right. So yeah, we're not far off, it's just along the highway here. His website looks really good. Yeah, yeah. And he's a dental implantologist. Yeah, oh. that's why, like, he's a dentist. He's a specialist. But he's a basically. specialist in yeah, implants. Yeah, like, he's, he's a more qualified. That's why I'm, where I go to the dentist in Southport sent me. To he's him. an implantologist. Yeah. Yep. He, he told me to come to see him because he, okay, yeah. he can't do this stuff of work. Yep. Yep. So, implantologist. Dental implantologist. That's what they So you are Dr. Michael Sett? Sett, yes. Is that his name? Yes. yes. And so what does it mean to be a um, dental implantologist? Um, so yeah, you should do more training ideally. So um, there's different levels of training. There's a dent dentist, a GP, which is most of us. There's oral surgeons and periodontists who are um, highly trained in many things. And they're like the pinnacle of the, of the career. And there's in between, there's a postgrad diploma in implantology, which I've done. Yeah. So kind of between a GP and a specialist in that field. So I'm not a specialist per se. <laughs> I've got training that's higher than a general dentist, but not as high as, a, as an oral surgeon. And we, we do things that are in that space safely. Uh, we don't do things that oral surgeon may do. They're more highly trained and do things more complex than I would tackle. Uh, but I'm highly trained to do what I do uh, day and day. Yeah, it sounds like, like your website's very impressive and <laughs> all your experience. So what, um, what sort of um, materials do you use for dental implants? So the implants are titanium, actual physical oh, wow. screws, okay. uh, but the teeth on top, there's different choices. There's um, zirconia and porcelain, which is the, the nicest one. It looks, looks like teeth, shiny, high luster. Um, there's acrylic uh, for on for temporaries, which is adequate. It uh, hasn't got the same shine or luster as porcelain does, but uh, entirely appropriate for, for temporary teeth. Uh, and for single crowns, it's normally just um, porcelain and titanium. Oh, sorry, porcelain and zirconia. Oh, nice. Nice, that would be nice, shiny. <laughs> so, good, yeah. <laughs> so what, um, if you could recommend three preventative measures for dental health, what would they be? Uh, oh, simple. Um, yeah, reduce sugar frequency um, <laughs> and thorough brushing and flossing is crucial. People don't floss uh, or don't perceive the need for that, but most problems happen where you can't see. Uh, and by the time a problem has um, arisen, it's too late. So, so regular checkups, uh, reduce sugar frequency and flossing. Okay, we'll do post-op visits. Yeah, 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 we'll do post-op visits. Yeah
Yeah, pretty good. Oh, you said mm-hmm. lemon jelly soon. That makes the like the more pleasant flavor. Oh, I did put something on the gum yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Sort of take Explain to you what we're doing exactly. Oh, yes, so we're taking out his tooth today. Yeah. Well, you are, not we. <laughs> yeah, well, we're grafting the socket as well, so he's. I should have showed the CD. Do you want to show you now? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to, yeah. That's Gary Slane. Oh, yeah, that's Gary's lip. Yeah, that's Gary's lip. This is his tongue. This is the bone we see here. So the tooth on a, on a canine tooth or eye tooth is very large, so it fills the whole jaw volume basically, and the, the bone on the outer side, which is this little bit we see here on, on the front teeth is always very thin. So when that tooth is lost and extracted, that bone will collapse and we'll start to lose our horizontal uh, volume of bone to place an implant later on. So for these cases uh, on front teeth and eye teeth, we pack that, oh, pack that socket with a graft of cow bone, which minimizes that bone contraction in this plane. Uh, if we didn't do that, we may struggle later on to come back and try and place an implant. Uh, if the bone was thicker, not so required, but if it's thin like this, which is typical, uh, we, we graft that routinely. What that looks like is, it's a cow bone product, and we'll show you when I get in there. So it's been, it's a block of cow bone deproteinized, and we trim that to size to fit that socket, and then we suture a pigskin membrane on top of that to contain that in place. And if we saw this later on, we'll find that bone uh, contracts very minimally in that direction. Yep. So again, not done for all cases, but a case of Gary's large to thin outer bone. Uh, we do that routinely. Um, and I'll show you the photos during the procedure and after. Let's see if I can quite like it. So you're literally regrowing that bone, is yeah, it? Yeah, it's like, like a scaffold to encourage Gary's bone to go through that, but it's a space maintenance requirement. So if we didn't maintain that space, that bone caves in and just drops in like so. So you lose about one third the jaw width over time. So. If it gets too thin, we can't implant later on. So we lose our volume. So it's a, it's a preventive measure to make life easier later for uh, more routine implant placement. And Gary said this. You said this implant would see him out. Uh, yes, with, with good care, it should. <laughs> so this, this will now be his permanent tooth. Yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a slow process because of the the need to graft, it's tooth out, grafting, waiting time, several months, then implant in, yep. more time waiting, and then tooth finally comes at the end. So we can do different things faster, but in Gary's case, it's got to be a, a slower journey um, to, to get a good result. Now, that's in. And as wide as can again, it's in. I just want busting a bit more area, I'll be as I can now. Going to take. Uh, so once we we're going to remove the tooth, place the graft, and then suture everything up. So I think we're expecting around an hour and a half, uh, maximum two hours. So Michael will always allocate just a little bit of longer time as well. Um, so yeah, we'll take our time and yeah, mm-hmm. excellent. So we're ready to move right, into Let's the into big room before this wears off. Yeah, we can place. Yeah, that's great. And if you can pop those glasses on for me, please. Thank you. It's a fair while we'll be lying around. Yeah, you can probably move down a little bit. It might be a little more comfortable for you. Yeah, probably there. How's that? Is that comfortable for you? Numb and they can get worse because it feels like it's pretty big now in the lip. 
Yeah, actually, I can see as you're talking, your, your mouth's not um, moving properly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's feeling pretty numb. Yeah. Numb or the better. Because that was years ago why I hated dentists, because I went to a dentist a long time ago with an infection and the numbing needles did nothing and then I told him and he said no it's good and he still ripped it out and that's where the same tooth that's why I had to get an input um, uh, um, root canal in that spot because he destroyed it so I'm going to be placing this little rubber shield so this just helps keep your lips just out of the way in case yeah yeah <laughs> it just because um, it is awkward isn't it? Right. yeah and it's a good vision for us as well yeah. if we just and move the lips away then it's a little bit easier to see everything as well so it's going to feel a little bit like a stretch there you are and how's that is that comfortable enough yeah yeah great so you can see it just it brings the lips away so we have full vision of everything yeah so what we'll start with doing is just topping up with a little bit of anesthetic and you'll feel some pressure pushing yeah but you shouldn't feel any sharpness or pain. So if you, you feel more than just pushing pressure, more sharpness, you let us know right away and we'll give you a little bit more anesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a bit of noise seeing go, we're going to just expose more of the tooth now. What we do now is we'll just take some, like a little trough of bone here and here. Oh yeah. And it gives me a purchase point to hang on to then.
There's a lot of pressure there, mate. broken down it is on the edge so all we had to do was expose more of the tooth to get some to grab yeah we thought it was like this so nothing to hang on to yeah i saw you tugging at yeah. it yeah, yeah. So the tooth out how are you tracking okay you're good yeah so one of the fun part now now we're grafting so that's a good example i don't know if you can see yeah i'll come in again yeah. i just um handed yeah, sure. it to you let me focus in again Yep. So that's that okay. thin bone we're talking about. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. So if we didn't protect that and um, prevent, prevent it from flossing, it would yeah. cave in over time. Wow. We'd better take some away to get the tooth out as well. So just hope to re resurrect the socket for future placement. And this is a good case. You couldn't put an implant there straight away. Sure, yeah. Because the hole is too big and the, the tooth is too large. So if you try to put an implant now, it would just fall out. It wouldn't hold. <laughs> yeah, not going to grab it. Yeah. Okay, so now you've got but, to strengthen it But up. in time, bone will go through that space. Yeah. And if we encourage it to do it a certain way, it makes it easy later. Um, do you want to break it, mate? Do you want to spell? Do you want to break it? You good? Yeah. Ah, that was it. That's the hard part, mate. It's very gentle from now. It's all just sort of trimming things to space. It's called bias collagen. It's a block of cow bone. That's going to be in the packet of the same new idea. I'm sure, yeah. So what to do, we're trying to pack that socket um, with this. Mm -hmm. and I sort of eyeball the shape of the tooth root and generally trim that roughly that size. And I'll try it in the mouth and check that it fills the space fairly well. Oh, right. Are you sure? That's the bone. So here's the tooth here. And that's the cow bone product. And that's the... And this tooth's quite wide, so it'd be pretty much the whole width of that. Yeah. Oh, so you're literally going to shake that white yes, block yeah. that you've got? Yeah. Oh, wow. So that that block is very stubborn to being resorbed or dissolved over time. Okay, so, yep. But it will allow his own bone to grow through that over time. How fantastic. Yeah. That is awesome. Mm. So now you're going to become a sculptor. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, I'll, wow. I'll try it on and then check it fits and we just sort of trim it to fit. How fantastic. I'm using that as a bit of a guide. Yeah. Pretty good at getting these yeah. back on there. Wow. That fills that space nicely. So that, over time, if that outer wall wants to try and collapse, it can't go any further than the graft. Mm. So just hold that space out. I can see that. Yes. So like scaffolding, like It is, said. yeah, exactly. Yeah. How cool. You know, this has made me less scared of the dentist, ironically. Oh, yeah, really? cool. cool. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's called, that's called a mucus graft seal. It's a, a membrane of pig skin and it's designed just to protect the graft from being exposed to the mouth, like fluids and saliva and so on. So it gives it an immediate cover and then his own gum will grow across that over time. So very soon I'm going to suture that in place to his own gum. That'll stay there nicely and securely. Okay, so we've got the So this on the final stretch you go, this is quite fitly though, it takes a bit of time to, to suture it together now. So you're suturing the gum over the... Suturing the, the edge of the membrane to his own gum, just oh, so it stays in place. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Uh, otherwise it would fall off. Like and I'll suture his gum across that on the finish. I'm sorry, I don't... You being a model patient there, Gary, thank you. Sensation plant. It's all very gentle from here on in. Let's get that in.
There's no real physical hole there anymore, it's all closed over. Oh wow, that is such a neat job. Another heel set though. That is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Never know where they're going. <laughs> it's awesome. Huh? Oh, that is really nice. It's cool. Eh? Gary's mouth's never looked so good. <laughs> no, it's very good. It's it's really beautiful yeah. job. We do a lot of this. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I'm going to take this out. Yeah, okay. Take your time, mate. Don't jump yeah. up too quickly. So we're all finished, mate. We're well. So you didn't feel any pain? No, it was felt excellent. Yeah. Okay. And when you're talking about that makes you less scared. Yeah. It is true. Like, yeah. And we do have this fear of dentists. And I'm, I had fear because I had a really bad yeah. experience a long time ago. Yes. But now, as long as and from the dead and everything, and the dentist yeah. is not a butcher like they were that's right. 30 years ago. Yeah. It's just fantastic. And it makes a big difference when things are explained really well yeah. for you. Yeah. There's lots of detail, yeah. you know what to expect, there's no fear of the unknown. Yeah. Well, that's part of the reason I came back after yeah. talking to you when I first came. Yeah, explained everything so good. Yeah. Michael, and it, yeah, yeah. Like yes. And he explains things so beautifully yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Oh, really? Glad I did come back here. Oh, good. And we're happy to. Top of the Excellent. Yeah. 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 Yeah.